America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you another story of today. Here is K-7. Ladies and gentlemen, in the early months of 1939, the governments of many countries found dissension within the ranks of their cabinets and councils. Some of the lawmakers were outspoken for peace. Others favored strong demands and a militaristic attitude toward the world. Members of this latter group in one country formed the Blood and Steel Society. This society was ruthless. Some patriots and officials who opposed war were murdered or forced to accept the society's views. It is the story of the Blood and Steel Society and how it was crushed that my old friend John Holbrook introduces now. Thank you, K-7. In these troubled days in the world's history, there are many plots and counterplots which are never made public. It is the story of such a plot which K-7 tells now. It begins as two high officials of a foreign government confer with each other. I issued a statement to the newspapers this morning, Torag. I intend to go through with my speech. It is my duty. The people should know the situation we face. I agree with you, Kovac. But look at this. A letter. You too. Yes. I too have been threatened with death because I support you. They know I do not approve of their military plans. Our people want peace, Kovac. And I intend to fight side by side with you. Thank you, Adolf. I felt sure of your support. It is one of the reasons I have come to you. This speech, it is the one I am to deliver before the citizens rally. I leave this copy with you. If anything should what happen... What are you saying, Paul? That if the Society of Blood and Steel should kill me, I want your promise to deliver the speech for me. You have that promise. And I will leave you. I'm so tired. Now wait, Paul. One thing more. You have your letter from the Society with you? Yes, I haven't even turned it over to the police. Go, give it to me. But why? Why do you want it? Because I have sent word to an old friend, secret agent K-7. I intend to smash this so-called society. They are a ring of murderers who threaten our peace. K-7. I've heard of him. But here, here is the letter. I leave it with you. Now I must go. Thank you for your promise to deliver my speech. If they should... Not enough, Paul. They would not dare harm you. I'm not so sure. Well, good night. Good night. I still have work to do, or I would go with you. I understand. Tomorrow's an important day. The committee meets again. Yes. And I'm afraid of the results of the meeting. Good night, Paul. Good night, my friend. Oh! 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 Paul. Paul. What have they done to you? A few hours later, the voice of K-7 cracked through the ether over a secret radio wavelength set aside for diplomatic messages. Monsieur Torok, an ocean separates us. It would be useless for me to attempt to come to you in time to be of assistance. I am sending my friend, Agent M, who is already near you. Trust him implicitly. This is K-7 speaking. The next day, an airplane landed on the small airfield outside the capital city. A short time later, Monsieur Torok received a visitor. Mademoiselle, you, you are a special agent? No, Monsieur, only the assistant of Special Agent M. M is here. He has sent me to you because he prefers to remain unknown for the present. But you are, uh, you are young and beautiful. What can you do? I can help you, Monsieur. First, the threatening letters. Do you have them? Yes. Then give them to me. M wishes to examine the handwriting. Of course you can have them. But how can they help? Neither you nor Agent M knows anyone here. M has his own methods of operating, monsieur. Already he's setting up his laboratory. He asked me to get the letters. I place myself in your hands. Here are the letters. Take them. Thank you, monsieur. Tomorrow you will make the speech monsieur Kovac intended to make. Yes, mademoiselle. Tomorrow I speak for my friend. If I am allowed to live until then. You will speak, monsieur. And you will use what is in this package. M has sent it to you. The instructions are inside. Now I must go back to M. I may communicate with you later. Good luck, monsieur. And tomorrow, speak as you have never spoken before. Speak for peace.
With those words, Yvonne departed, leaving a mysterious package on Monsieur Torok's desk. A few hours later, she stood at M's side as he used a powerful microscope. There were two men, Ivan. These bullets prove it. Monsieur Kovac died from a bullet fired from a forty-five revolver. The second one is from a thirty-eight. It would not have been fatal. But, M, we have less than 24 hours. How are you going to trace the gun? We won't have time to do that, Ivan. But we have time to do something else. We're going to find the identity of the two men who fired the shots by tracing the handwriting and the two threatening notes Torok and Kovac received. How can we for a short of time? My plan is already in operation. Now, here, I'll show you. Now, we've both got to work fast. Do you see these papers? Yes. Why, they are petitions. Exactly, Ivan. They are petitions for war. Tonight, the lawmakers are all here in the city. They gathered in hotel lobbies talking of Torok's speech and of Kovac's death. We are going to circulate among them and get signatures for these petitions. Then you will compare. Is that it? That's it. It's a long chance, Ivan, but we must take it. M and Ivan met with fair success. They went to the hotels and cafes and asked all to sign their petition. Their work was completed a little, a little after midnight. They had more than 100 names. They went immediately to M's temporary laboratory and started the difficult job of comparing. Ivan, I found it. Look at the signature. K. Zalda. It's the same, M. You will arrest him. Oh, no, that would be too dangerous. There may be others. Well, then how are you going I'm to... I'm going to trail him, Ivan. I'm going to stay at his side until after Torok has made a speech. Then, if nothing has happened, I'll place him under arrest. How can I help you? There is nothing you can do now, Ivan. Uh, it's nearly 4 a.m. Uh, go to your room and sleep. And tomorrow? Tomorrow, when the public assembles in the great square, be in the front ranks. Watch for me. Unless I am mistaken, this killer, Zorda, will also be there when Torque begins to speak. I will be at his side. I am to come to you. Uh, yes, if you can. If anything happens, keep calm. The police will be with me. In case of a disturbance, the men causing it will be seized and rushed to a room underneath the speaker stand before the crowd knows what has happened. If there is a disturbance, come to me there. Your pass will let you through. I'll be there, Em, at your side. The next day found a great crowd in the square of the capital. There were flags and shouts for peace. Then Monsieur Torak, the patriot, was introduced. Monsieur Torak is here to read the speech of his dead friend, Paul Kovac, who was also your friend. It is fitting that we should be quiet as he talks to us in his sorrow. Monsieur Torak. Fellow citizens, Paul was my friend. He came to me on the night he died and asked that I take his place if, if anything happened. Paul Kovac, a great patriot, knew he was a marked man. I suppose that now I also have been marked for death. But our country calls, and I must say what is in my heart. As the patriot spoke, a beautiful woman among the front ranks of the citizens moved quietly to the side of M. It was Yvonne. Both she and M watched a man who stood just in front of them. Suddenly, the man's hand moved toward his pocket. Yvonne uttered a warning. M, you're going to shoot. Don't touch your guns, Arthur. I have you covered. Who are you? You're under arrest, Arthur. Walk straight ahead to the door under the speaker's platform. You can't stop the society of blood and steel. Walk straight ahead, I said. Ivan, follow us. M, Ivan, and their prisoner, Zauda, had almost reached the door that led to the room under the speaker stand when suddenly a shot rang out from another quarter. <laughs> The speaker faltered. As the police jumped on the man who had fired, the crowd stood still in awe. Mr. Torak, he's been shot. Oh, he'll be all right, Ivan. He's wearing a bulletproof vest. That is what was in the package you left on his desk. Now, come on, we've got to get this man under the stands. The crowd might get out of order. The other will be seized. Then Monsieur Torak continued. I am not injured, my friend. That shot, which was intended for me, should make you realize the kind of men who would plunge our country into war. They are desperate, unscrupulous. They care not for my life, 
nor for the life of your son and your daughter. A minute later, the man who had fired the bullet was also hustled under the stand by the police. There, M faced Zorder and the other would-be assassin. You have both failed. I charge both of you with the murder of Paul Kovac. You'll have to prove that we shot him. That proof is in my hands, Zorder. These two revolvers. This forty-five is yours. A bullet from this gun killed Paul Kovac. This other gun belonging to your accomplice is a thirty-eight. It, too, was used on Paul Kovac. All right, take him away. Yes, sir. Come on. Em, are you sure Monsieur Torak is uninjured? Positive, Ivan. He was wearing the bulletproof vest you took to him. Suppose we step outside and hear the finish of his speech. Oh, I'd love to. You have heard my message. I hope the word peace will come from both your heart and your lips. <laughs> Our work here is finished. There will be no war here. Only lasting peace. You should be proud. Your work has made peace possible. For the time, the Society of Blood and Steel has been defeated. Whether or not it will be heard from again is problematical. For, unfortunately, right does not always conquer might in our world today. However, we must continue to work for peace. Listen for my next story. This is K7 speaking. (laughs) 